Hey guys, welcome back to the Million Dollar Case Study, season four, episode four, where we're publicly and transparently building a physical products business and scaling it to a million dollars in revenue. Not only that, but we're donating all the profits from our physical products to Pencils of Promise to build schools in underprivileged areas around the world. I'm your host, Greg Mercer. I'm joined by my co-host, Rolando Galliano. What's up? Hey, how's it going, Greg? How's it going, Freedom Builders? We're excited because today we're gonna make fun of an otherwise kind of boring topic. We're gonna be talking about doing patent research, how to figure out whether or not you need patents, and if you choose to do so, we'll tell you a little bit more about hiring a professional. Rolando and I have spent the past four hours interviewing two different experts. Brad is a product designer and he has filed for over a hundred patents. Kins is a patent attorney and she shared a ton of valuable information with us. If you choose to hire professionals for these services, we'll include links to both of them in the description below. Speaking of professionals, I wanna start this episode off by saying neither Rolando or myself are attorneys. None of this information we're giving you throughout this episode is legal advice, but what it is, is information that we've learned over the years selling on Amazon and interviewing different experts. We wanted to condense this down into information that's easy for Amazon sellers to understand, and that's information that's very relevant just for Amazon sellers, you guys, to help you guys succeed. To start off, let's talk about three different types of IP. Trademarks, copyrights and patents. I think these are things that people often get confused and oftentimes I see people use the wrong terminology for each of these individual IP protections. A trademark is something like Jungle Scout. We've trademarked Jungle Scout and that gives us the protection so that other people can't use our mark, Jungle Scout, to deceive customers into thinking that they're the ones with the Jungle Scout product. Copyrights are the rights holder to something like a song, a photograph, or even the text that you've written for the description of your Amazon listing. If you take your own images and write your own text for your Amazon listing, then you own the copyrights for these items, and that gives you protection from other people stealing those and using them on their own Amazon listings. Wait a second, this was supposed to be fun. <laughs> And with patents, that would be patenting something like this clamp. If I was the invention owner for this clamp, if I was the one to invent it, then I could file for either a design patent or a utility patent, and that would give me protection from other people ripping off my design and using it for themselves. Now, oftentimes with Amazon products, most of them don't have patents and you really don't need a patent. I've never filed a patent for any of the products that I'm currently selling on Amazon, but we wanted to teach you guys a little bit more about it throughout this episode so that you could decide whether or not you want to patent your individual item. I don't I don't know why I'm wearing this. This, this is one of my old Amazon products. I, I don't even have a patent on it. So for Amazon sellers, it's actually not that important to have a patent. I never personally had one. Most Amazon sellers don't patent the products that they create. That being said, I wanna educate you guys a little bit more about patents so you can be the one to decide whether or not a patent's right for you. Depending on what kind of changes we make to our keyboard tray, we may or may not file a patent that's to be determined. Hey Greg, before we start diving into how to file for a patent, let me explain how the two different types of patents that exist. So why don't you toss me that clamp you got there? Oh, this one? Yeah, man, I got you. Awesome, thanks Greg. So there are two patent types. The first is the utility patent, which protects the way an item is used or works. The second one is a design patent. The design patent basically protects the overall look. So there you have it, the two types of patent types that exist. Cool, thanks for that. Toss back that clamp, I'll give you some examples. All right, here you go, man. So with this clamp, for example, a utility patent, remember, protects the way that an item is used or works. So if I had a utility patent on this clamp, no one else could make a device that squeezes down and holds onto an item. That's the functionality of a clamp. With a design patent, that protects the way that an item looks. So if you can imagine, if you were to draw this out and outline it, that's how this particular item works. And if I had a design patent on this clamp, then no one else could make a similar clamp that looked the same to mine. So that's the difference between a utility patent and a design patent. Great examples, Greg. Now, if you want to find this content in written format, you could go to junglescout.com forward slash MDCS 4 dash 4, where you could get the digital download of this video. Cool. 
Something that's good for all Amazon sellers to know is how to do patent research. Even if you don't wanna patent your own product, which is true for most of you guys, you'll still wanna know about how to make sure that whatever items you want to sell are not patented. The last thing you wanna do is get into legal trouble due to infringing on other people's patents. Now, this might seem a little bit scary, but don't get discouraged. Again, this is a relatively easy thing to do once you understand how to do so. I'm gonna give you a few different resources of where you can search for patents. The first one is Google Patents. Now, this is by far the best and the most user-friendly to search through. The second one is USPTO.gov. This is the official US government website where you can search for patents. However, to be honest, all this information is in Google Patents and it's much easier to use. So I wouldn't even use USPTO.gov, I would just use Google Patents. A third place you can go to look to see if an item's patented is again, just on Google, but instead of going to Google Patents is to just search for the item with the word patent next to it. So what you can do is I could search for super clamp, that's the type of this clamp, super clamp patent. So I would search for those three words on Google and I would see what kind of items come up. Now, if this is a more obscure item that you're not sure whether it's patented or not, oftentimes this will bring up patents related to that product, whether it be on the manufacturer's website or somewhere else. The fourth thing that you can do is you can actually order the product and see whether or not it has a patent number on it or a patent pending stamped on it. Again, I could order this clamp since we're using this for an example, and I could look to see if there's anywhere on it that it's written the patent number or patent pending. If so, that's a dead giveaway that the item is patented. You can also look just on the Amazon listing. Oftentimes people will advertise their patents, say this is a patented item or whatever else on these Amazon listings. So you can just go to the Amazon listing and check. And lastly, another way to narrow down your patent research is to see whether or not there's a lot of people selling a similar product or if there's only one seller selling a very unique product. If it's the latter scenario, then it's probably patented. If it's the former scenario, meaning a whole bunch of people selling a very similar product, then chances are it's probably not patented. Let me show you some examples of this. So what I've done is I've searched for kayak pedal drive, and what I'm looking for is this particular one made by Hobie. This is very much patented. I know they have a lot of patents on this device and it's very unique. If you look at it, this is it right here. You kind of pedal with your feet and it makes these little fins go back and forth and makes the kayak move along the water. Now, when I look through the Amazon results, Hobie is the only one selling this particular type of pedal drive. There are other types, for example, this one, but as you can see with this one, when you spin your feet, it turns a propeller instead of making fins kick back and forth. That's because Hobie has this patent for this particular item. In comparison, if we look at our super clamp, which again, I'm just looking at it on Amazon, Right away, I see three different brands selling what appears to be the exact same clamp. There's Manfrotto, there's Limo Studio, and there's Impact, okay? So all three of these brands are selling the exact same clamp, which is a good indicator to me that it's probably not patented. Now, if you ask an attorney about this, they would say never go off this to determine whether or not an item is patented. You should always do proper patent research using an attorney and the USPTO uh, database and everything else. But I know from experience for us Amazon sellers and for the majority of the people watching this video that this is a good indicator. I'm not saying this is the end all be all, but this is a good indicator to know whether or not an item is patented. Hey, does this still make sense or am I losing you guys? Put your questions in the comment section below and I'll answer them this Thursday during our live Ask Me Anything session. So since we're considering selling the keyboard tray, let's do a real life example of how I would go about my patent research for this keyboard tray. I think this is gonna help you guys because I can already sense that some of you guys are feeling a little bit overwhelmed or scared out about the patent research and it really doesn't need to be that way. Let me show you. I'm gonna start off by searching on Amazon keyboard tray. So I searched keyboard tray on Amazon, and what I see is there's a whole bunch of people selling keyboard trays. I see there's a few different types. You know, one type is, looks like has this style of mount. You know, that's the same style of mount. I think those like screw into the bottom of your desk. I see another type of keyboard tray, which is the clamp on keyboard tray. One person selling this, that's sold by Stan Steady. Another one is Future. I see another one, oh, that still stands steady. Let's see, 
Here's another type of clamp-on keyboard tray from Boss Office Products. And again, another one. Well, this isn't quite clamp-on tray, but right away, just by looking at all these, I'm pretty sure that these items aren't patented because there's a whole bunch of different brands selling products that are very similar, okay? Now, again, that's not the end-all be-all of patent research, but right away, I have a great gauge and my gut feeling's telling me that this product is not patented. What else do we say were easy ways to figure out if an item's patented? Check on the product or the packaging itself. Rolanda, let's do that real quick. I got you, Greg. All right. So I'm looking and I don't see any patent numbers. Nothing stamped on the, the tray itself or even on the uh, clamps. So I think we're good there. Checks out. Another good place to check is on the Amazon listings themselves. If there's any bigger brands selling your product like 3M or Johnson & Johnson or whoever else, those would be the companies that's more likely would have patents. I don't see any big brands that I'm real familiar with on this particular search page. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on a few of these. And what I can do is once I'm on the page, I can do control F for the search bar and just search for patent. It's not coming up with any results for this particular page. And I could go on and do this for a few more pages. This company Vivo, I think they might be a little bit bigger. So let me just do a search for patent on their page. And again, it's not advertised. Again, is this the end all be all that there's not a patent for this item? No, but we're looking for low hanging fruit, which would signify to us that these products are patented. Since I think Vivo might be one of the bigger companies selling this type of product, let me go ahead and just do a Google search for Vivo office supplies. I think this is their website and I can look for patents listed on their individual website. So they have a search bar. I'm gonna go ahead and just search patent right on their website. It looks like the only two that popped up, neither of those are the keyboard tray. Oftentimes on other sites you can find down in the footers that they'll have like a patent page of all their patents listed. Again, this isn't true for every company. This isn't the end all be all, but what we're trying to do is we're just trying to find patents in like low hanging areas. So now that we've checked all of those areas, I'd be 99.9% .9 confident that this keyboard tray is not patented just by using these methods that I'm describing to you right now. If I did want to go ahead and get into Google patent search and dig around there, I might spend a little bit of time doing that. However, like I said earlier, reading through all these different patents is a difficult thing to do if you're not a patent attorney. But if you're starting to find some patents pull up for these individual products that you're searching, that is where you can go to find out more details about the patents. Hopefully by going through that example, this brings a little bit more clarity to you guys about how to go about doing patent research. We don't want this to be the hurdle or the speed bump that leads to us not getting started on Amazon. Don't get stuck in analysis paralysis. Get through this part and get your item up on Amazon. I'd like to spend these last five minutes talking about filing for your own patent. The first part of this episode was focused on making sure you're not infringing on other people's patents, but what about if you want to patent your product yourself? Now, just to be clear here, I have launched hundreds of products on Amazon and I don't have a single patent to my name. So this by no means is required. However, I get the question often of how to protect other people from copying my idea. So remember, there are two different types of patents, utility patents and design patents. Let's start off by talking about utility patents. Utility patents offer a tremendous amount of protection against other people copying your idea. However, they're relatively difficult to get. They require a very unique product, and it's also gonna take a lot of time and money and probably gonna have to work with an attorney in order to get it. If I invented this clamp and I wanted to get a utility patent on this clamp and there was nothing else like it on the market, so it was very unique, it would probably cost me about five to $10,000 in attorney fees to work with the lawyer to file for this patent for me. If I spent my whole life inventing this clamp and I was so proud of it, and I wanted to make sure that no one ever copied me, then that would probably be worth doing. But for most people watching this right now, that's not really the case. They're more so looking to sell products on Amazon, so that's not really necessary. If you are interested in filing for a utility patent, there is something called a provisional patent, which you can get for I think under $100. It's relatively simple to get, and this essentially 
saves your idea or holds your idea for about a year while you file for your utility patent. A design patent's a little bit different. Remember, the design patent just patents the look of our product. So again, if I invented this clamp and there were already other products on the market that performed the same functions of this clamp, but nothing that looked just like mine, and I wanted to protect that look, that's when I could file for a design patent. Oftentimes, inventors can file for their own design patents instead of having to hire an attorney to do so since they are more simple. However, if you do choose to hire an attorney, expect to pay somewhere in the neighborhood of one to $3,000 to have them file for you. So Greg, if the keyboard tray works out as far as getting quotes back from our manufacturer, should we go ahead and file for a patent? Good question, Rolando. And I think the things to think about are one, what types of changes or improvements are we gonna to make to this product? If we make some pretty significant changes and they're very unique, then we could think about filing for a patent for this. But probably a better way to answer this question is, why do we need the protection and how much protection would it give to us from other people copying our idea? For something with like a design patent, this only gives a minimal amount of protection. If we change the shape of our tray a little bit or how it attaches to the desk or whatever else, we could patent those different designs. However, all you have to do is make some small tweaks to get around those patents so it doesn't give us that much protection. For us, a utility patent probably would be cost prohibitive and it wouldn't really be worth it. There's other ways to kind of like protect your inventions on Amazon or to become more defensible on Amazon. And it's more so around your marketing and getting your item to rank well and doing well with PPC. And these are all the types of things we're gonna be talking about throughout the million dollar case study. With that being said though, the design patent from a legal sense doesn't give you a lot of defensibility, but most Amazon sellers actually see a patent or a patent number on your item or on your listing and run for the hills because they think, okay, there's no way I can sell a keyboard tray now. So that's one of the benefits of following along with this million dollar case study. You now understand that and know how to dig into these different patents and have a better understanding of them. If you're looking to hire a professional for your patent research or your drawings, if you're struggling with the drawings, with your poor man's drawings, then I would definitely recommend that you head on over to junglemarket.com to find a professional. You'll find people like Brad and Kinza there. They're ready and available to help you out. Good point, and for full transparency, the jungle market is in the Jungle Scout business. What we decided to do is to create a marketplace where we could pre-vet Amazon experts who we recommend, put them in our marketplace, and then it's a place for you guys to go to hire them. So if you need help with drawings or patent research or to file a patent or even for a whole bunch of other stuff like photography or copywriting or a whole bunch of other things that are required for your Amazon business, the Jungle Market's a great place to go. The poor man's drawings that we spoke about in the last episode, I've found to be sufficient in about nine out of 10 use cases when communicating with these Chinese factories. But that being said, if you are making more advanced modifications or inventing a whole new product, you may want to hire an expert that can do the different drawings for you. Quick pro tip, before I'm willing to disclose any information with a professional that I'm looking to hire, I just have them sign an NDA and that would make me feel a whole lot better. Now we made it very easy for you because there is a sample NDA in workbook number four. Hey Rolando, speaking about workbook, what other action items do you have for our audience between now and next week's episode? This week's action item is for you to complete the patent research checklist found in workbook number four. You can access workbook number four by going to junglescout.com forward slash MDCS four dash four. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, it's considered an entry in our Amazon seller seed fund where you can win up to $2,500. All you have to do is take a picture of your completed assignment, upload it in our private Facebook group and on Instagram with the hashtags MDCS challenge, as well as Freedom Builders. Cool, and that wraps up today's episode. Make sure to join us next week. Where we're gonna be teaching you guys exactly how to find the best factories to manufacture your product. If you haven't already done so, hit that like or love button and subscribe to us on YouTube so you'll be notified of future million dollar case study videos. Thank you guys very much for tuning in. See ya. See you guys later. Keep crushing it.